Hello. Hey, Mary, it's Seth. Hi, Seth. What do you <laughs> I knew it was you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're creeping me out a little here. But... I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, should I hang up and call you back? <laughs> I'm bored. Oh, what are you doing? There's no, there's no queen bees. <laughs> no, it's true. There is that 70s show, though. There is. There's lots of that 70s show, and um, I'm watching it will help me fan the flames of my everlasting crush on Topher Grace. <laughs> <laughs> really? You have a lot of everlasting crushes. You're going to have to thin the pile at some point. What are you talking about? I already got rid of my John Mayer crush this month. Hey, I'm I'm down one. Down one, you know that's you know only a few what a thousand hundred to go. Thousand hundred. A thousand comma a hundred comma. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You need to work on that. Maybe next year when New Year's comes around, you can make a resolution to thin down one everlasting crush a day. Per day. Though that's certainly then they're not everlasting once you've removed them. They're they're just crushes. <laughs> yeah, that kind of. It kind of proves me wrong on the everlasting bit. It's a paradox. <laughs> it's an um, oxymoron. Your crush patterns have fascinated philosophers for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, my brain did just kind of go off on a tangent of like, what would an everlasting crush be? Because isn't the nature of a crush transient? Like, can uh, there be an infinite crush? <laughs> these are the things we talk about when there's no new, <laughs> new episodes on. <laughs> All right, oh, here, like... all right. Let's let's skip right to the good part. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we should. We're only like uh, what six weeks or so away from from new Degrassi season eight. Is it that many? I thought it was like four. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Maybe it is four. Wait. Anyway, it's October tenth. Four 10th. to six weeks. October, yes. <laughs> <laughs> your your mileage may vary, but October tenth, Degrassi's back, and we're gonna try to talk to um some of the Degrassiites up until then because there's a lot of new people this year. Yeah, it's which like, is awesome. It's like a whole new show. It's fantastic. And the first person we're going to talk to is Nina Dobrev because we have catching up to do with her. Yeah, it's like it's like we talked to her a few months ago, and then bam, she's a huge star. <laughs> totally, yeah. she's she's awesome. I like her. Let's call her. All right, let's call Nina Dobrev. Mia, by the way, everyone knows that, but yeah. I should clarify that's Mia. Mia. Just in case, and Allie from American Mall. Yes, in case and yes, of course, the, we should say that explicitly. She is a big star because she was the big star of American Mall on MTV. Totally. All right. Let's ask her all about what it's like to be a big, fabulous star. Let's do that. Hello? Hi, Nina. Hey there. Hey, it's Mary and Seth from TheEnd.com. Hi, Nina. How are you guys doing? Good, hey, how are you? We're great. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm in Toronto. We just finished filming a day at Degrassi, so pretty much everything's amazing. Sweet. Um, this is all still season eight. Yeah, we're still uh, filming season eight. Pretty much the end. We're doing the last four episodes, the big, special, crazy, fun episodes. What happens? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. You try to get me that time. No, you know that I can't tell, but. Um, all you need to know is that they're a lot of fun. They're special. They're new and interesting and something that I don't think anybody really would have expected, but definitely something that the fans are going to love. So you're saying that there are ninjas. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> ninjas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not that far. They're not that crazy. But but let's just say we, we um, encounter some old faces once again oh. somebody old comes back to um to pay a visit oh. all right wait before we get further into degrassi because there's plenty we need to talk about um okay. i want to talk a little bit about american mall because the last time oh, we talked yeah. you were like in the middle of shooting it you were in utah yeah i remember i was um right, that was the day after we did night shooting it was a crazy day yeah, you must have been exhausted. You were so nice to talk to us. <laughs> yeah, and then and then what happened is we started coming into coming into the office at the end, and then you would be plastered all over the building in these giant posters of you. And American on the Mall. subway. And on the subway. You know, I came to New York to um to promote it for the premiere and you're right, it was kind of it was kind of it was cool and and interesting, but but not creepy, but like it was really odd to see myself everywhere like all over the MTV building, like billboards in Times Square, all over the subways, the buses, like everywhere I'd look, I'd be like, oh, there I am. <laughs> but it was an awesome feeling. 
I mean, does anyone ever, like, can you ever get used to that? Like, would you notice it every time it was around and would it always like shock you or were you kind of like over it by the time you left? Oh, I, I think, I think it's something that you'll always take note of. I might not like freak out like I did the first time and be like, oh my God, look at it. I might not do that every time. Um, but I'll definitely take note and kind of just freeze for a little moment, look at it and turn away. <laughs> there, there had to be at least one time where you were like standing next to your poster, uh, waiting for a train or something. And somebody came up to you and said, Hey, Hey, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It happened once in Toronto. Actually, we were, um, I was having dinner with some friends at this restaurant and there was a big billboard and it kept on like coming up. Cause they changed, um, they changed the billboard and like it kept flipping back. And then this one girl was like, is that you over there? And I got like really, really red. <laughs> I got really, really embarrassed. <laughs> you yeah. weren't like, hell yeah, it's me. That's my picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my friends made me take pictures in front of the posters. Oh. Like my friends would be like, take a picture, take a picture. So they'd like, they'd wait for it to come up again and they'd take pictures of me in front of it. Oh, like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have one question that's kind of related to American Mall, which is that, like, um, Allie in the movie, your character, you know, she wants to go to school for music, but her mom is kind of like, you know, now you need to get a business degree. What was it like in your family as far as you pursuing an acting career? Were they ever kind of like, oh, maybe get a day job first or anything like that? Um, yes and no. I mean, my uh, my mom is an artist, like a visual artist. So she's always been supporting me and doing all kinds of artistic things. And then when I started doing Degrassi and started working, I started to not like I, I pretty much didn't go to high school for my last year. I went, uh, but I had a per, like I had a tutor. I wasn't going to like regular classes. And so I finished high school and I got into university and I was doing school. And and then for the American Mall, I had to take a little bit of a break. And when I told my my family, like my Bulgarian side. Mm -hmm. Everyone was a little bit shocked. Like they were kind of not just dis well, they were a little disappointed. They're like, "What? Like, does that mean you're not going back?" Like everyone was sort of taken aback. But um, I mean, I'm doing great, and and I'm doing what I love. And ultimately, like everyone goes to school to to figure out what they want to do, and so I'm doing that right now. So that's why they were ultimately supportive of it all. Oh, good. That's great. Now, all right, we saw two rumors, I guess, on your IMDb page. One was that you have a part in Transformers 2. Is that true? No. Oh. I wish. Oh. I know. It was so disappointing when I, I mean, I found out the rumor because I read it too. And I was like, really? What? <laughs> Do I? I got all excited. I was like, but then at the same time, I probably should have auditioned for it in order to be considered for a part. But I never <laughs> even auditioned. <laughs> I have no idea how this was fabricated. I have no clue. So weird. There must just be a girl in that movie who looks like you or something. Maybe, but it was it, the day it started. It started the day after the MTV Movie Awards when they announced that they were like doing it and stuff. And I was there, so I don't know. Maybe somebody saw us in the same vicinity and and thought that that I was connected in some way to the cast. It's so funny how they get so specific with these rumors too. They're like, she plays a classmate of Shia LaBeouf. It's like she <laughs> sat down and was like, I'm going to make this up now. <laughs> like. <laughs> I uh, well, I'm disappointed that you're not in that movie. I love like debunking these rumors because it's very yeah. rare that you get to read something online and then actually just call up the person and say, "Hey, is this true?" Um, <laughs> maybe though, maybe Transformers Three did you one. That's what I'm hoping yeah. for. Yeah, there that's you exactly go. Right. You'll be the star. You could be a voice <laughs> of a giant robot. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome. So the other uh, the other IMDb thing said that someone saw you at a Dave and Buster's in Toronto and stopped to talk to you, but that you couldn't talk because you were on your way to your limo. Okay. So this is partially true, but partially not. Okay. Yes, I was at Dave and Buster's this one time for my friend's um, 19th birthday. And in Toronto, well, in Canada, the legal drinking age is 19. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a big deal. Um, but no, there was no limo involved. In fact, I didn't drink that night. I drove. I was a designated driver, and I, I have a Toyota Corolla, and so it's very far fetched. Like, it's nothing to do with the limo. It is black, but I highly, like, I, I don't see the resemblance. Limo, Toyota Corolla. Like, <laughs> is, it, is it a black stretch Corolla by any chance? <laughs> 
no, no. And also, most I... people who ride in limos just drive with them themselves too. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't have a top hat. I didn't have one of those cool limo hats either. So I'm not sure where where people find do these, like figure these things out. But no, we're busting this. We left those up. <laughs> so um, back to Degrassi. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, how are all the new characters? Like, can you can you fill us in? Um, this is like really the first time we're going to talk about season eight. So, um, can you tell us anything about the new characters and how it's been working with new people? And yeah, totally. Um. They're great. First of all, they're great. We've got eight new kids. They're fresh. They're young. For most of them, this is like their first acting gig. And they've just, they're just so, not only naive, but like, but like in a good way, they're very fresh and excited. And so the energy on set is so cool. Um, Aislinn is, um, plays Darcy's sister. And she's like this, this really, really, really talented girl. And she's got, she's going to be big. I, I can feel it. And um, Melinda and and Sam and RG. RG is great. RG plays Riley, and, and he's really, really, really cool. Like, we just got a really great group of people, and they've just molded into our cast like they've been here forever. Like, we all get along really, really well. Does it kind of make you feel a little bit more like – It's. I mean, I guess it's kind of like regular high school. It's like or you're the seniors now, and, like um... – you know, like for a while, you were kind of like the new kid in the cast, and now, like, do you feel like one of the old hands? And oh yeah, well, I kind of feel in the middle. I'm sort of like in that awkward stage, <laughs> kind of like in high school when you're in that awkward like grade grade ten, eleven. Right. Um, so I feel, I feel, I still feel new compared to like Cassie and Miriam and them, but I definitely feel like like the the older the older kid compared to them. So yeah. Oh. Do you guys like give them advice and stuff? At the beginning, yeah, but they've honestly the routine like they just they blend in so much. It's been here forever. That's but then awesome. again, we've we've been filming for like a few months now, so yeah, we've yeah, pretty used to the environment. It's really awesome. So can you can you say anything about how Mia and the new characters interact, or what's going on with that at all? Um, what I can tell you <laughs> is that Mia kind of goes through a big transformation and and she hmm how can I say this without getting too much away um yeah I mean Riley and Mia start to we have like a little bit of a storyline at one point and um you know what I don't even know what because I'm so far into the season I don't know what I can say without giving too much away right right okay um, I'm wow. curious about your take on Lucas because I sometimes I feel like he's just evil, and sometimes I feel like he's just like a 17 year old boy in an impossible situation and just isn't handling it very well. Like, do you like what? What do you think of him? Um, I think Lucas, like you said, he's a 17 year old guy, doesn't really know what he wants in life, and he knows that he doesn't want to be tied down to like this kind of a like a family environment right at this time in his life. So I, I understand that, but he's just very selfish. Sometimes, like, you have to think about more than just yourself because there's, there's a bigger picture. But, um, yeah, it's it's like a character flaw. Yeah. Like it's part of everybody has good and bad things. And Lucas seems to have more bad than good. <laughs> <laughs> it always drives me nuts when he acts like, like Izzy is, is your kid or Mia's kid and not like, you know, like he's babysitting his own kid. It's just like, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. That's your spawn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have a little bit of, I have a little bit of something there. Like a little caring. I don't know. I just, he's a little, he's, he's pretty cold. He's a pretty cold person. Is he, is he nice in real life? Oh, uh, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Great. yeah. <laughs> he's <a good> <laughs> Yeah, it's not. He's, that's not what he's really like at all. Okay, good. What about the little girl who plays Izzy? What's she like? Larissa is such a little sweetheart. She, I mean, she's pretty much been there since I've been there, and and we've sort of grown to to have this really cool relationship. And the thing is, she still calls me Mia. Like she doesn't know that my name is Nina because when she was younger, that would have really confused her that I had two names. Oh, my God. So she always calls me Mia, and <laughs> whenever she comes on set, she, like, comes and has, like, drawings, and she, like, makes me stuff at school, and she's like, 
this is Izzy and Mia. And, like, she gives me, like, little pictures. And it's really cute. I really like her. Oh, my God. That's adorable. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and wait, and she's not, she's not played by twins? I th- I always thought that, like, child actors had to be twins or something. Generally, they do. Um, but what happened with us was that <laughs> it's kind of bad. Every time we had twins come in for the auditions and stuff, they always started crying as soon as they saw me. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to cast somebody older, and she was older and more mature, and she could understand better. And it, but there was only one of her, but she was just perfect, so we just mm. got her. Maybe <laughs> they're really maybe her. maybe she really is a twin, and they just haven't told you yet. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or what? maybe not. <laughs> How were these twins scared of you? I'm like trying to imagine meeting Nina Dobrev and being like, ah! <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Like, they were a lot younger though. They were like, they were like babies. Right. So right, okay. I mean, you take them away from their mom, and they don't really know what's going on. So they were too much. So we had to. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, is there anything else you want to tell us about season eight that we don't we don't have to drag out of you? <laughs> um. That it's gonna be awesome, and you guys should check it out. The fans, you're gonna love it. And there's tons of new things going on, new characters, new spicy things, and and like it, it goes kind of through a transformation. Like the whole show, there's a lot of um, a lot of twists coming up. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be intense. Awesome. So, nice. yeah. What are you guys doing for the premiere? Do you have a little party or? I don't know yet. We haven't uh, we haven't been told. So okay. Hopefully. Hopefully it will come to New York. I mean, I'm not guaranteeing anything because I don't know, but I would, I would love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe mention it. <laughs> we'll I'll, see uh, if it happens. I'll fill out a slip of paper there for the suggestion box at work and uh, yeah, do it, <laughs> do it. We'll, we'll lobby to bring it over to New York. Well, well, I just did TRL recently and yeah, that was so much fun. So that'd be cool to do again. Yeah, wait, um, how how was it during TRL? Like, was it nerve wracking going on live and a oh. little bit? I think to be completely honest. It was more nerve wracking because the Jonas Brothers were there, so there was like three thousand <laughs> crying, screaming girls, oh my God. <laughs> and that was a little intimidating, and I couldn't hear myself. But um, <laughs> but it was really funny because they didn't tell us that the Jonas Brothers were going to be there. Mm-hmm. So when we got there, we got into the limo, and there was like hundreds and maybe even thousands of girls, <laughs> and and I was like, wow, like they're really promoting the American Mall. <laughs> 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 like I was so excited. And then we got upstairs. We're getting, like, hair and makeup and all that kind of stuff. We go out, and then all of a sudden, like, the Jonas Brothers walk by. And, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? And then they came out. Like, they're actually the sweetest guys. Like, I, I mean, I I liked their music from before, but I, I've never met them before. And they walked up to, to Rob and I from the movie. And they were like, guys, congratulations. You guys must be so excited for your movie. And they invited us to their concert that night. Like, they were so Hi. sweet. Yeah, and so then we ended up uh, being guests together, but like, but then I was like, oh, okay, now I see <laughs> why there are so many people here. And I can I can vouch for this because I I'm really impressed that you were able to like keep it together for that show. I wasn't in the office that day, but I was on a conference call and I was on a speakerphone. The speakerphone was on the 33rd floor of that building, the building that the TRL studio was in. And I'm 300, I was 350 miles away. And I could hear the girls from, from down in, in Times Square screaming through the speakerphone. It was Yeah, incredible. like there was no more street. Like the whole street was completely blocked up because there was like girls everywhere. And every time they would speak, like the girls would just start crying. <laughs> they were crying. <laughs> but it was awesome. I mean, it was it was really cool to see it firsthand. Yeah, I couldn't deal with that if I was a if I was a Jonas brother. I couldn't deal with the girls crying when I talked. Oh, I'd just be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd walk up to them and be like, Are you okay? <laughs> Did something happen? <laughs> yeah, walk up to all three thousand of them. Like... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today. No problem. Thanks for, for calling me. It's, it's always fun to talk to you guys. Awesome. Great. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, for sure. Right. Hi. See ya. All right. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. I feel confident that at some point in her career, Nina Dobrev will be making people cry. <laughs> I mean, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I could see you're right. She is actually like a really good dramatic actress, and you know. Well, I don't. I gives... don't. I'm sorry. I don't mean just that. 
I mean, also that like she'll be such a star that when people see her, the girls see her on the street, they'll just be like, "Oh my god," and just start crying. Yeah, you know, if they ever do those Degrassi Mall tours again, it's like pretty much slam dunk because there were definitely tears shed at every single one of those. Totally, totally, totally. I want to mention that South of Nowhere um, season one is in the click all this weekend. We're starting with the whole like and like the retrospectives and we're starting with the whole like build up to the final season of South of Nowhere, right. honoring the show and its majesty and wonder and beauty and how much we love it. South of Nowhere in the click. Season one starting now. Totally. All right. I'll talk to you next week, Mary. Okay, cool. Bye. Bye.